this yesterday, like, <sighs> it's like the chemo is the only thing that's going to give him a few months. And I want him to have a few months to like, to get out here. Like, I will go to him, but he wants to come out here because I'm not the only one he wants to see. Like, he wants to see his, um, the rest of his family that lives out here. So, ideally, he wants to make one more trip out here. And then the rest of the trips will be me going to him because he won't be feeling as well, you know. But it's crazy because, you know, man plans, God laughs. And there's no, there's nothing to guarantee that he gets these next few months. So that's the situation with my dad, the moving situation. Um, we, uh, we were in a rental for one year. One year. It was a nice rental. Uh, what we moved in, you know, she didn't clean the carpets for us. It kind of smelled like cigarettes. I think the person that lived there before smoked in the house. Um, and like the walls were not fresh, freshly painted, right? And I just feel like renting is a scam because she was like, well, you know, if you want the carpets washed, get a hold of me and I'll, I'll do the carpets. And um, if you want to paint, let me know. But I'm like, we're not going to paint in a rental. Like, she was trying to get us to paint or something, you know. Um, so anyways, we were there for one year. My dog never had any accidents. The carpet looked the same as it did when we moved in. Um, the walls, there is, like, the command strips did pull off some of the paint in a few areas. So I get, I get that. But she wants to charge us for carpet cleaning and um, new paint and stuff. And I'm like... Uh, I bet you she charged the last people for that and then never did it. You know what I mean? Like, I bet she charges everybody for that and then never does it. So, um, whatever. I'm not going to fight. Like, we're out of the rental. We're homeowners now. So, um, I have nobody to, to be mad at about walls in the water, like, paint issues but myself. Which I already am, because, um, that's another discussion. So anyways, um, we're out. She's taking whatever out of the deposit, and she probably won't even do that shit with it. She'll probably just move more people in and do the same thing to them, but what, what are you gonna do, you know? Um, I'm like a clean freak, so I know there was nothing, nothing carpet-wise. There was nothing. I know exactly what there was. And, like, this woman did not come fix anything when we needed it. Like, well, okay, she did, but it would take, like, a month. Um, the handrails to go up the stairs were broke when we moved in, and they're still broke right now. Like, you can't hold on to them to walk up and down the stairs. And I have a baby. Like, my grandma can't even come visit because she can't use the handrail. Just a bunch of other crap like that. And that's the nature of renting. And whatever whatever but um I was just going to tell you guys about the books that I'm just finished up and the books that I'm reading right now so um if you can hit subscribe if you have not otherwise if you have if you can hit like or leave a comment let me know what you're reading or what's on your tbr or if you've read anything that I'm about to talk about um so the book that I just finished up, I'll read you the synopsis for it. It is called, um, let's just go to Goodreads because I think they have like the best synopsis, synopses, synopses, is that it? Um, and it was The Lost, The Lost Apothecary. And it's not my typical genre. My typical genre is super dark and twisted. This was more of like a mystery. And I did this one on audio. And um, half of the audio is in an American accent. And then half is 
coaching course. Rule number one, the poison must never be used to harm another woman. Rule number two, the names of the murderer and her victim must be recorded in the apothecary's register. One cold February evening in 1791 at the back of a dark London alley in a hidden apothecary shop, Nella awaits her newest customer. Once a respected healer, Nella now uses her knowledge for a darker purpose, selling well-disguised poisons to desperate women who would kill to be free of the men in their lives. But when her new patron turns out to be a precocious 12-year-old named Eliza Fanning, and an unexpected an unexpected friendship sets in motion a string of events that jeopardizes Nella's world and threatens to expose the many women whose names are written in her register. In present-day London, aspiring historian Caroline Parswell spends her 10th wedding anniversary alone, reeling from the discovery of her husband's infidelity when she finds an old apothecary vial near the River of Thames. She can't resist investigating, only to realize she's found a link to the unsolved apothecary murders that haunted London over two centuries ago. As she deepens her search, Caroline's life collides with Nella and Eliza's in a stunning twist of fate, and not everyone will survive. So, um, that was really good. Uh, like I said, it's not my typical genre. It was more mystery, and I read more like suspense or, um, horror or addiction fiction. But if you ever get, like, a, a reading slump, like you've been going too hard on one thing, it helps to just switch it completely up to something different and break up, and then when you come back to your regular genre, it's just, you're, you're back at it, you're back in the game, you know, it's like a little breather, so yeah, that one was pretty good, um, and then, let me open my bookstagram just to make sure I'm not missing anything, you know what I do, that's really stupid, when I want to look at my bookstagram, I go to my apps, and instead of opening, or searching for Instagram, I type in bookstagram. I keep doing that. What's wrong with me? I have to go to Instagram and then open my bookstagram account. Like, bookstagram is not a real app, Natalie. Whatever. All right. Um, so, that one, I just finished that one, like, the day before yesterday, I think. Um, the Looker, I already talked about that one with you guys. And then, I think I did. So then, right now, I am reading, back to Goodreads, um, I started a book called If I Had Your Face, If I Had Your Face, by Frances Cha, C-H-A, Frances Cha, Frances Cha. Um, I just started this, so I don't have too much to say about it, but... I will read you the synopsis. A debut novel set in contemporary Seoul, Korea. About four young women making their way in a world defined by impossibly high standards of beauty. Secret room salons catering to wealthy men. Strict social hierarchies and K-pop fan mania. Even as a girl, I knew the only chance I had was to change my face. Even before a fortune teller told me so. Kayuri is a beautiful woman with a hard-won job at a room salon, an exclusive bar, where she entertains businessmen while they drink. Though she prides herself on her cold, clear-eyed approach to life, an impulsive mistake with a client may come to threaten her livelihood. Her roommate, Miho, is a talented artist who grew up in an orphanage but won a scholarship to study art in New York. Returning to Korea after college, she finds herself in a precarious relationship with a super wealthy heir to one of Korea's biggest companies. Down the hall in their apartment building lives Ara, a hairstylist for whom two preoccupations sustain her. Obsession with a boy band pop star and a best friend who is saving up for the extreme plastic surgery that is commonplace. And Juana, one floor below, is a newlywed trying to get pregnant with a child that she and her husband have no idea how they can afford to raise and educate in the cutthroat economy. Together, their stories tell a tale that's seemingly unfamiliar yet unmistakably universal in the way that their tentative friendships may have to be their saving grace. So, so far, this is really good. This is the cover. Um, it's just so sad to me. Like, I am all for whatever you want to do to your 
yourself for yourself do it uh, I mean if you have the money and something's driving you crazy and that's what you really want then go for it um, but I am not for a society that uh, makes people think you need all the surgeries and to be perfect like that just breaks my heart like, I'm at an age now where I don't really care <laughs> um, about as much, you know, I'm like, well, you know, some things drive me crazy, but do I care to fix it or to use my money to fix it? Nah. Um, but I fear for like, because of, you know, the way social media is right now and kids are just glued to like looking at the highlights of people and the um, edited images and stuff, which I guess, yeah, that, uh, that has always been a thing. Um, so, like, I read somewhere, you know, if you're with your daughter, and I think this goes for sons, too, because this, you know, it's this, it's becoming a thing for boys, too, but at a grocery store, and you see them looking at, like, the, the cover of a magazine, and somebody that's just, you know, got unattainable body, you know, unattainable, like, that half of that's Photoshop anyways, but, you know, it's just say, like, look around, honey, like, this is a magazine, this is heavily edited, and that is a, a person who, had, like, spends all day on their looks, like, they, that's their job, and all their money, but look around at this grocery store, this is what people look like, you know, the people that are shopping with us, that's what people look like, that's what their faces and their bodies actually look like, that's the real world. So, but in this book, yeah, every single girl over there, and I think that's kind of true, like, there's certain, certain areas in the world where you just save up to get plastic surgery, like, that's your college, basically, is just to try to look your best so that you can get the best job or the best partner, I don't know, I don't know, so, that was that. For this grand finale of what I started reading. So I'm reading that one on audio too, but the next one I'm reading is actually, um, I'm reading it on, as an ebook and it is called Viral. I almost didn't read it. Like I couldn't remember why it was in my, um, why it was in my, uh, oh, why isn't it here? TBR. I was like, what was that one about? I couldn't remember, right? I do that a lot because my TBR is hundreds long. And then I'm, I uh, go on Libby and start searching for um, books that I put on my TBR. And if it pops up like, oh, this one is, you don't have to wait for it. I'm like, wait, why did I put that on my TBR? What was it even about? So I did that with this one, but I will tell you, I'll read you the synopsis and then I'll tell you so far what I've, you know, read. So if you don't want a spoiler, I'm only like a quarter in, so I don't know how much it would actually spoil, but if you don't want a spoiler at all, then see you next time. Okay, so this is called Viral, and it's by Helen Fitzgerald. So far, 23,096 people have seen me online. They include my mother, my father, my little sister, my grandmother, and my gra my grandmother, my other grandmother, my grandfather, my boss, my six-year biology teacher, my boyfriend James. When Leah and her adopted sister Sue go away on holiday together to Magalove, Magalove, I don't know if I'm saying that right, to celebrate their A-levels, only Leah returns home. Her successful, swatty sister remains abroad, humiliated and afraid. There is an online video of her drunkenly performing a sex act in a nightclub, and everyone has seen it. Ruth, mother of the girl, 
abortion baby um, they adopt her because they tried and tried and tried and could not get pregnant so they adopt her and then shortly after they adopt her they do get pregnant which I guess is kind of like a common thing like you do hear that a lot so the, the two daughters were almost raised as like Irish twins Irish twins means like a year apart my two oldest are Irish twins I don't recommend it <laughs> it's tough so anyways um, she uh, ad she adopts the, the, the Asian baby and then they have, together they have a uh, a white daughter so there's two girls and um, even though they're like twins you know one is brown and one is white and the, um, the Asian one talks about you know taking when they took baths and she would just try to scrub her skin clean because she was like why can't I look like my sister just you know she's going through some stuff and she just loves her sister so much but she puts her like on a pedestal but they were like really good friends when they were little and they would sleep in the same room um but when the uh the, the white daughter is named Leah and then the Asian daughter is named Sue S-U so um when uh Leah turns about 12, 13, you know, as teenagers can be, she gets a little funky, she gets a little attitude, and she's starting to be really mean to her sister, but her Sue just, you know, is just there begging and waiting for her to, like, give her some attention still, she doesn't even acknowledge her at school, she's just a total dick, so, um, uh, you know, they go through their whole teenage years, high school, like that. She kind of says, like, racist things to her, too. It's just, it's sad. And then, like, Leah is the party animal. And then Sue is, like, academic and um, kind of a, she's a virgin. She's kind of, you know, not into that. She has, like, a boyfriend, but they don't do anything. They're just, I don't know. So, um, the, the Leah wants to go on a vacation. And the mom's like, well, you can go, but both of you are going you and your sister are gonna have this probably like a senior trip type thing you know and Leah's like ew I don't want to take this boring ass sister on my cool girls you know my hot girl vacation so she um, she's like well fine then I'm gonna teach her how to be a party girl so her mission before this vacation is to kind of corrupt her sister but I think the whole time she had these plans to just ruin her sister's life because like to prep her for this hot girl vacation she um like teaches her how to kind of cuss she like makes her say cuss words and get more comfortable cussing you're so stupid and um dresses her like um in little bikini type stuff and oh what is my teenager saying Oh. Uh -huh. 
judge. They're like, was she drunk? They're asking Leah all these questions, and Leah's just like, I don't know, I was drunk, I don't know, I was drunk, like, I don't know, it's pretty crazy, 